All right, the other piece of feedback that I had was regarding node modules and Ruby libraries and what are those, and uh, we can finally erase that off the board. Uh, Peters. All right, so we're gonna to touch more upon this a little bit next week, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what you're walking into. So there is, at the core of it, there's base like JavaScript code and there's base Ruby code. Um, that just does a certain, what you expect. But the issue is like sometimes you might want more customization, you might want it to do something every single time, um, or you might want to like write a library for other people. So what happens is, um, every single language has what's called libraries. Libraries are basically, and frameworks. So libraries and frameworks are basically thousands of lines of code written in that particular language to serve a very specific purpose. Um, NPM, and which is Node Package Manager, is a collection of all the different libraries, the official libraries that are written uh, and publicly available for, um, for Node and JavaScript. There are thousands and they make it look really nice and things like that. Um, let's take a look at NPM popular NPM packages. One of them was prompt. Um, honestly, the prompt thing was just more or less to get your juices flowing in your brain to figure out how to Google things and how to troubleshoot early. Um, you don't really need to know prompt ever again. It was just like, who can who can figure this out um, and just like more or less like get ready that's going to be this difficult I think today we have 10 challenges so just kind of give you an idea um, so most dependent upon packages so like these are all like the the very popular packages one of them is like react js react is a framework that we're going to learn like, during weeks I think 11 10 through 12 10 11 and 12 um, it's basically written by uh, Facebook to make web applications very quick and very responsive. Um, there's another one called, um, let's see, JavaScript D3. This is kind of cool. Um, it's basically, it allows you to visualize data in a much more like appealing way than pie charts and things like that. So like these are some of the projects that were built with, uh, built on JavaScript D3. And um, it might take a little while. Because like all of this is JavaScript code. Like imagine if you had to write this on your own. Um, this, is, this is all powered by JavaScript, but you're able to like kind of like hook in there and like grab things as you would like um, and make your application a little bit more rich. A lot of your job as a developer is basically finding things that other people have done and just kind of plugging it into your thing. Um, so that's like, we'll talk more about it, but I just kind of want to give like a 10,000 foot overview. Inside of Ruby gems, there's things that will make your life a little bit easier, like uh, the Faker gem. Um, and you can kind of go here. It's all open source. So when I jump over here and I click on source code, it'll take me to GitHub. And you can kind of see, like, this is an example of something that is a little bit more robust and rich. Um, there are, it's been forked 1,327 times. There's 1,097 commits, 358 people have contributed to this. If you ever want to have like um, fake data on your app web application as you're developing things, um, this is like the gem that does it for you. So simple installation, gem install faker, and then if you ever need like a name or something, you just do faker name dot name and it'll give you a, a name each time. My favorite one personally is a faker hipster in case you ever need to like fill out like a description of like, let's say you're troubleshooting or you want like, um, like a demo users to like use your web application. You don't want to type out things every single time you have Faker fill in that data for you. So they have like Faker hipster. Um, you know, if you want like a sentence, you just do Faker hipster, that sentence pork park, iPhone leggings, put a bird on it. Um, you can do paragraphs. Yolo, Yolo tilde farm to table hashtag like, it just, it's just like, it's just a bunch of like fake data. They have like faker Star Wars, they have faker names and addresses and zip codes and phone numbers and things like that. Imagine typing it all yourself. You can, 
or you can let, allow someone who's like written it for you to do that work for you. That's basically so, node modules and Ruby gems at a 10,000 foot view. So who, who ends up profiting by, you know, is like databases like this. So there's an area, there's an open source site, people like putting in all of their, all of the information. I mean, it ends up being that company that's open source, right? That what's company's the incentive, what's the incentive for people to there is not a ton of incentive to be quite honest. Like Faker probably doesn't make any money. The person yeah. who wrote this probably doesn't make any money. But this particular um, this particular person is going to have because this person wrote like popular open source stuff. Yeah. That person probably won't have much of an issue finding a job. Yeah. You know, they might make they might not make any like money off of it. Yeah. But they directly have, that's yeah. their that's their status. that's their yeah. status. Yeah. Right. Or like for React. Of developers could would, would use React to create apps for Facebook, and build on top of Facebook, right? So offer apps on Facebook. You could, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like Ruby on Rails was written because somebody was sick of typing the same thing over and over again to get the same kind of web application started. So DHH actually just made it. Actually, while we're at it, we can just go to slash Rails. So this is like Ruby on Rails. All the source code is here. It's all open source. Anyone can touch it. You know, anyone can modify as they as you see fit. You can kind of see there's 64,000 commits. There's 3,000 contributors. Been four 15,000 times. These are the pull requests. Um, our pull requests are basically just like comments on style and things like that. But if I were to actually look inside of these, these are like I can see the specific. Like I have no idea what half of this is. <laughs> Um, but it's like they found bugs inside of here. They want to make it better. It's just, it's more of like a, it's kind of hippie-ish in the, in the sense where it's like, what's mine is here. It's a very communal, right? Like they're, we're not making any money off this. We just want to make this software better. And, and also we can all selfishly say we contributed to Rails and this is my, this is where I contributed to Rails. It's very difficult to get anything in here. So, but you're saying DHH created Ruby on Rails and now that it is, like, you know, doing whatever. So where did he make his success that he just created an open source, you know, put his... I don't know how he made money off this because it is open source and yeah. he doesn't have anything, but uh, essentially resolve is like ridiculous. Uh, it's an Instagram. He wrote a book. He did write a book. Uh, So he he created Ruby on Rails. He founded a company called Basecamp. That's probably where he made most of his money. But this is his life now. Just, <laughs> just he's like a, a, a he's, celebrity. Yeah. In his work. Yeah. Work. So Super people fun. also will pay for him to come out to speak at conferences, and we're talking like tens of thousands of dollars per engagement, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars per engagement. Um, if you invite a, somebody to come speak at your company about something that will also cost money. Um, so there's a lot of money to be made in, in that arena. And obviously he's done very well for himself with his ridiculous uh, Instagram where, you know, uh, we probably won't be like that. So, but, but this is where it started. So he created Rails and yeah. then he went off and created some like, camp. Or no, he, he founded a company called Basecamp, which oh, okay. was a web consultancy here in Chicago. Ah, I see. And then because oh. they kept doing the same thing over and over, they're like, let's just create a framework in our free time. So he created a framework. It took off. Groupon used it right away, which is how it got a lot of traction. And then a lot of the Chicago startup community started using it as well. Oh, okay. uh, and then, uh, I mean, it's free. Anyone can download it. It's, he doesn't make any money off that, but I'm sure his company has gotten a lot of contracts or something like that as a result. You can still see he's still the um, the main person who writes it. He's got the most contributions out of everyone. And this guy's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like the old romance novels from the 80s, you know? But yeah, the, he, this person is the second largest contributor to Rails, and now he works for GitHub. You know, like he can have any job that he wants pretty much from now until when he's done with his career. Any other questions so far? 
All right, so I kind of wanted to go over some of the fundamentals in both languages that we're learning, so JavaScript and Ruby. Um, I hope you started to see from yesterday to today how how many similarities there are and like how the programming concepts are more or less the same, but the syntax is different. Realistically, you're not going to use Ruby on Rails. Um, you may not use Ruby on Rails and you may not use JavaScript at your first job. It could be a C, C Sharp shop. It could be a .NET shop like, a, like one of the old other students from Charlie uh, named Starnell. I think he's starting at a place called Coyote Logistics. It's a .NET shop. Uh, we, don't, we didn't teach anything .NET. But the idea is like a lot of the programming concepts are the same, like loops, and variables, and uh, if else kind of logic, and things like things of that nature. So we're I'm hoping that you can kind of get that it's not like syntax is different, but the concepts are the same. So I kind of want to go over like if loops and things like that just to make sure that we're all solidly on the same page, and that's pretty much where we're going to end this morning. So I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially just make this a little, little larger without me. Can people see this? Is this all right? It's a little small. A little small. I'm just going to have to jump back and forth pretty quick then. So I'm going to basically run through these slides. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show it what it looks like in Ruby and what it looks like in JavaScript at the same time. So everyone is familiar with these. These are going to be pretty common and pretty standard across all programming languages. These are the arithmetic operators. You don't need to know a ton of math in order to program. I would say at most you need to learn algebra one, which is just like two X equals four X equals two. That's about as much um, as, as much math as you're going to need. Uh, where's my little. Um, these should all be fairly self explanatory addition is plus, minus is, uh, is the minus sign and, and things of that nature. The two uh, main things that you're going to need to that are a little bit different are, is this exponent. It's going to be uh, two multiplication signs put together and that just means it's an exponent. And this modulus is just the remainder. So three mod two would return you one. Was well, it also the division operator, right? In Ruby, I don't know what it is in JavaScript. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's not, there's no, like, no decimals at all. It's, there's no decimals. It yeah. just returns you the whole number. So yeah, three divided by two, number. yeah, the closest yeah. whole number. Yeah. Uh, variables. Okay, so this one we kind of covered yesterday. But variables in, are basically one thing points to another. So instead of typing the same code over and over, I might want to assign that to a variable if I know that, like, like uh, this person's first name is going to be like John the whole time. Instead of typing John the whole time, I can just say like first name equals John and then just interpolate first name everywhere. Um, they're always going to be in both JavaScript and in Ruby, they're both going to be assigned using the equals operator. Uh, Rod. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how's it going? Good. Okay. So for variable assignment, um, we have we have two ways of doing it. In one's going to be done in JavaScript, and the other one's going to be done in Ruby. So how do I define a variable inside of JavaScript? Okay. Or the name of the variable. Okay, let's let's say it's first name. First name. So yeah, first name. Like that. Um, capital N. Capital N. Why is it capital N? Easier to distinguish the. Easier to see like what the what the words are. Yeah. If I have, if I have, so I'm I'm not putting spaces in here. First name is obviously two words, but if I have two words smashed together, three words smashed together, each each word after the first one is going to have a capital letter. That's called camel case. Um, let's say my first name is going to be John here. It's actually not var anymore. Let or const. It's let or const. So var will work. It's basically out, it's outdated, but it'll still work. You'll see a lot of that around. Var will work, but let or const is the new one. Why? What is the difference between let and const? Um, const maintains that value until you simply change it. 
think. Let no, you can sign it once and it's done. Yeah, you can't change it. Oh, it's unchangeable. And, and then what is you can non-global? It's supposed to be non-global? Yeah, yeah that, that one will change all the yeah. time. So there's three ways of writing variables now. So in JavaScript, you can do var. Var is older. It's, it's called uh, it's ES5, ECMAScript 5, which means it's the version of, of uh, JavaScript that was released in 2015 was the last one that supported it. Um, we're gonna do, we can do let, let first name equal John, or I could do const first name is equal to John. These are three ways to write the same thing. Var is okay, var can change anywhere. Um, let is the next one, which is basically something that can change pretty often. Like uh, you might change your first name if you're like uh, undergoing like gender reassignment surgery or something, you might wanna change your name from one thing to another. So that's something that can change. Something that can't change is your race. Like I can't, I can't change the way that I, I look. Uh, so let is for something that can change. Const is something that can't change. So why was the name changed to var and const now? Why did they have to create let? Uh, we will get into that a little bit later. But essentially, what it is is it's block scoped. So yeah, I don't, okay. I don't want I to. Accept it. Yeah. So stop using var, just use letter. Letter const. const, yeah. Let is something that can change, const is something that cannot. Would you still use var if you wanted a global? No, you'd use const for a global. Okay, okay. linear, uh, for, for Ruby, it's a little bit easier. I don't really have to worry too much about it. If I wanted to do, my first name is John, I don't have to declare anything at the front. I just do first name equal to John. The difference is one is snake cased which meaning is it's like it's long like a snake with underscores between every single new word. The other one's camel case where the hump is in the middle for every single new word. Um, capitalization does count. So this is different from this, which is different from, and, and if you want like symbols and stuff like that, these are all different types of variables and we'll get into that. But as of right now, I think all we need to know is just, uh, just local variables, which is that. Uh, let's see. I think we covered everything. Data types. What's a string? Taylor, what's a string? Uh, it's, a, it's a statement. I mean, it's, it's a. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be a statement. It's a word. It's a. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Strings are anything with quotations. Okay. Like literally anything with yeah. quotations. You could put like exclamation points, numbers, special characters, anything within a single. A single bracket, single quote or double quote is a string. Uh, interpolation we talked a little bit about yesterday. Um, if we were to interpolate inside of JavaScript, uh, it would look a little something like, um, I think it's, uh, hi there, my name is, first name, is it like that? Yeah. So this is how I would interpolate using JavaScript. Inside of Ruby, it's somewhat similar. It'd be uh, double quotes. Hi there, my name is hashtag, and it automatically fills out for me, first underscore name. Two concepts, pretty similar, just slightly different syntax. It's the same concept of, I'm instead of typing in uh, like the actual value here, I'm just gonna find the variable and just dump the value inside of here. What's it called when you're just taking, when you're adding two variables together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Uh, numbers, there's two different types of numbers. One's an integer, which is a whole number. Floats are decimals. Booleans are true and false. This goes across the board for everybody. Uh, comments are basically human readable code. So you were asking about uh, code style, right? So generally speaking, if you are, Generally speaking, from what I've seen, I try to avoid having a ton of comments in my code. I don't, I don't particular, I've been told not to do it, so I tell other people not to do it. The code that you write should be self-explanatory enough so that you don't have to have comments. And what that means is you have to name your variables well, meaning if I have like, uh, if I have uh, age, like if I, let's say a variable is called age, name it age, don't name it X or Y or Z or A, like we don't know what that means. You should be 
writing your code in such a way that everyone is able to read and understand what's going on right away. So it's kind of like um, if I'm iterating over all the Roman numerals, right? I would say like Roman numerals dot each do Roman numeral, like a, a specific one. I wouldn't do each do X, X. What was X? I don't know what that is at that point. So you want to make sure your code is written in such a way that I don't have to have comments. Every now and then you're going to definitely need a comment just to help some people out inside of inside of Ruby. If I wanted to type a comment, it's just a hashtag in the front. This is a comment. And then in JavaScript, the corresponding thing is just going to be two forward slashes. Uh, this is a comment. How do you know if it's a forward slash or a backslash? Like how it lands at the top? Yeah, if I'm standing straight up and I'm leaning forward, that's a forward slash, which is why the, that is a forward slash. And if it's a backslash, I'm standing upright and I'm leaning backwards uh, or this. Um, printing and getting user values. Um, what's the difference between print and puts? One just prints it out, like straight up, and the other one puts a new line afterwards. That's about it. And then puts is a new line. Yeah, puts yeah. Is, is put string. Yeah. So that's going to be that new line. The equivalent in JavaScript is console log. Yep, yeah. just console log. Is there, what, what's the equivalent of uh, print and, oh, return is the same as? No, return is different in, in general. Return is basically, um, I'm going to evaluate what you want me to evaluate, and then I'm going to quit. So if I do like okay, return yeah. hello, I'm going to put hello out on the screen and I'm done. I'm exiting the program completely at that point. Okay, so console log is equivalent to print. print. Okay. And then puts, there's, there's no equivalent to puts in JavaScript. Um, other things that are pretty common across the board, equal, um, in Ruby it's going to be double equal, in JavaScript it'll be triple equal. Um, not equal is going to be bang equal. This bang means the opposite of, the exclamation point is also called bang, uh, so it's opposite of. Greater than, less than, this is basic mathematics, but um, yeah, it's going to be common across both languages. Booleans. Okay, this is kind of where I wanted to focus a little bit more of my time today. Uh, conditional logic, loops, and just the difference between the two. So, uh, let me see. Where's my... So, who here has been on a bad date? or dated someone who is very opinionated on where they want to go eat. Everybody has dated me. All right, we're going to use Peter. We're going to pick up Peter today in that case. All right, Peter, what is, let's say you and your wife are going out for food. Um, what is your favorite food? Mexican. Mexican, okay. Okay. Let's um, say let's. Peter wants equal to Mexican. All right. If we were to say this, this describes a typical night for Peter and his wife uh, be before the baby. Now it's now it's not as not as much free time. So the the idea of if else is basically if something is true, I'm going to do something. If something's not true, I'm I'm going to do something else. So let's say it's Friday night, and it's like if Peter wants. Um, Mexican, then I'm working on console log. <laughs> we are going out for Mexican. Um, like this, this might be how, like this, this might be like a typical night, right? So the way that it works for JavaScript and in Ruby uh, for that matter is if, and then some condition, the some condition goes inside the parentheses and that's either we're looking for this to be true in some way. So if this evaluates out to true, we're going to do what is inside this block. The block is the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace. Everything inside of it, so basically just line 14 in our case, is a block. And that's going to evaluate if that's what Peter, Peter wants. Um, let's say Peter is not feeling 
so Peter's the picky one in his relationship, and I apologize for picking on you. But let's say, what else do you want? What do you? What else do you want for Peter? Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Okay. If Peter wants Mediterranean, I definitely know that's not spelled right, but that's okay. Console log. We are going out for Mediterranean. I think that's the right way of spelling it. Oh, it's just, okay. So this might be a typical date night, right? Um, Peter's wife will ask him, what do you want to get? If Peter wants Mexican, like if this evaluates the truth, then we're going to console log. We're going out for Mexican. That's what we want. Otherwise, if Peter wants Mediterranean, we're going to go out for Mediterranean. Um, but let's say that Peter is feeling it's, uh, it's, it's date night and Peter's feeling generous and he does, he's, I, I don't know if this is true, I'm just picking on you. Uh, let's say, um, let's say he doesn't want Mexican or Mediterranean. Um, he's just going to do console log. Uh, what would you like? So it's basically, this is, this is ideas like how programs will read because programs execute top to bottom. So they'll go through the first if clause and then all the way down to the bottom. And if any of those evaluate to true, then that's the code that's going to get executed. So the first condition for us is if Peter wants Mexican, if that's true, then we're going to go out for Mexican. Otherwise, if Peter wants to go out for Mediterranean, um, we're going to go out for Mediterranean. Otherwise, if he doesn't want either one of those things, that is thrown into this extra bucket down here, which is everything else besides these two conditions. Um, and then he'll say, what would you like? The equivalent of that inside of Ruby looks a little something like this. If uh, Peter wants is double equal to Mexican, I'm going to print the going out Mexican. Else if, the else if is a little strange because there's no E. They just, I think the programmers were lazy when they first wrote this. So else if looks a little something like this. Else if Peter wants is double equal to Mediterranean. It doesn't know autofocus is two different files. So it's okay to use double equals and not have to use the so the double equal, so the double equal is for is is for Ruby. Triple equal is for JavaScript. I mean, we don't have to use strict equal for Ruby. The, the dot equal. Question. Oh, you don't have to use dot equal. You can do you could do dot equal if you like. Um, so the the triple doesn't check. Uh, my variable check. Right? Uh, triple. I mean, the double doesn't check. The variable check. It does not. You could do either one. It's pretty loosely typed in this case. Um, these two, these two things on the left and right are essentially equivalent. It's basically the idea of I'm only going to execute certain logic if certain certain thing is met. You can think of it as like if I'm going out to a bar, if the person's ID shows that they're under 21, you say go away or I'm going to call the cops. Else, if they're over, if basically everything besides the fact that they're under 21, you can say come on in. Why print in that puts? No reason. Okay. Yeah. I could put puts there just as well. Feel good about if, if else logic. All right. Um, we did this. The while loop. Can someone describe to me a while loop? It's going to continuously loop through. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so there's going to be something called a while loop. All right, so let's go back to this. Um, let's go back to this uh, on drinking age, right? Let's create a, a, a function called uh, check age, um, and I'll starting age. All right. So if I was to do a while loop, it's basically like while this condition is true, uh, I'm going to do something. Once it's finished, I'll do something else. So let's say I'm a bouncer. So it's like while starting age is less than 21. What do I need to do here? I'm going to set, uh, print go away. You are under 21. So 
Do you have to have the the pipe saver too? Or? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I don't, I don't, actually don't even think I need this. Oh, that's that, that's for dot each do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, uh, why am I doing this? There's no there's no need for parentheses. I'm used to JavaScript now. Uh, so basically, it's saying while this this particular thing is not true, I'm going to execute this. There's another way of doing it, uh, which is called the until loop, which is basically until a certain condition is met, um, you can do this. So it's two ways of doing the same thing. One will make more sense than the other. It's like while this person is under 21, do this. Until this person is 21, do this. I'm generally in the until loop because it's like I like to think of it as the positive and not the negated positive. Like while this is not the case, uh, or I prefer to think of this until this is the case. Um, so similarly, I can just do until starting age is greater than or equal to 21, print go away. Two ways to do the same thing. One is going to make more sense in your brain. It might be the while. That's okay too. So the, so the first one, the while loop. So you are 22. That won't evaluate to true anymore. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, there's, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, right now it's not going to do anything. Okay. So again, this first one is like, while this condition is true, while the starting age is under 21, do this. Until the starting age is greater than or equal to 21, I'm gonna print go away. These two do the same thing. Uh, we talked about arrays. What's the difference? What is an array? I'm just gonna point out, I'm just gonna ask. Uh, go ahead, Alex. Um, it's an object where each um, of the variables stored inside of it are stored based on an index. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of kind of think that's basically it. So it's a data type. It's in square brackets for both languages, and it has specific indexes that have specific values. Um, if I wanted to, let's say I have this shapes right here, I have circle, triangle, and square. If I wanted to access the triangle, how would I access that? Index one. Why does it start at one? Why 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 is it one and not two? It's good. It's because you count from zero. Uh, that's a that's a computer thing. They always count, start counting at zero for some reason. I, I think it's stupid, but <laughs> that is literally the first number that comes up. So zero is the first number. So that's why they start there. Um, can I rely on the order like yeah. of that yes. of, a, of an array? Yes. Okay. That's good. Cool. Okay. Next. Yeah, because otherwise you're wasting a bit space. So you got zero and one. Probably. I think so. Yeah, it's kind of it's yeah, I think so. Um, key values. This is where people got really kind of lost yesterday. What is the difference between a hash and an array? An array is ordered. A hash is just like a tool of information. Yeah. So how do I? Add, so yeah. So an array is basically if you think about your the example I used yesterday was imagine your grandmother. Grandmothers generally take more pills than younger people, right? So if you have like this, the, the giant pill containers, what is, where is it? You have these containers right here. There's specific things that, the, that grandma needs to take every single day. Like Sunday might have all of these pills. Monday will have different pills and so on and so forth. There's a specific order to it. All she has to do is open it up and she'll know that that is what she is supposed to take for that particular day. Arrays are, arrays are ordered, and order makes sense a lot of the time. However, if you, you can think of a hash as just like not the ordered version of this. So if you take all the pills and you just dump them all in a giant bowl, but they all have specific colors, you can access uh, what, you, what you are looking for at that based on its color. So it's kind of like, hey, grandma, um, you should take the, uh, the blue pill. The blue pill is for um, heart problems and the the red pill is for uh, you know cholesterol or something like that you can it's everything has a specific key value pair or you can kind of think of it as um, cars each car has a specific VIN number so if I have a giant pool of all these VIN numbers if I just choose one I know I'm gonna get a specific car out of it
uh, iterating over an array. So if it's like, if I have a collection of things, let's say I have like 50 cars and I need to sell all 50 cars and I want to get the price of all those 50 cars, I, and they're in a specific order, I can just do, um, well, actually, we'll do, we'll do loops real quick, iterating over an array real quick. Um, Let's get a list of cars, favorite cars. We're gonna start with you. A Tesla, what? Uh, X, three, S. Okay. Taylor, you got another one? Ford F-150. Ford F-150, okay. America. It's like the most America car. <laughs> Alex, you got something else? <laughs> All right, Deja, you got something? Subaru uh, Outback. Subaru Outback. John? Bugatti Theron. Okay. <laughs> uh, spelled? B-E-Y-R-O-N, I think. Alex, oh, so you got something? Yeah, <clears throat> Optimus. Uh, Practical man, I like it. All right. <laughs> okay. 13 year old Honda Accord. So. <laughs> Good drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If I wanted to iterate over all of these and, and say like I want to, uh, I just want to print them all out, right? Mm -hmm. I can iterate over this array inside of Ruby by doing cars dot each do car. Again, I can name this whatever I'd like. I want you to start naming your variables based off of what makes sense. Like if I I if I did cars each do x, all of a sudden I'm a little bit more confused of what x is. But if I do like a car, like a specific car, um, I know that I'm going to, uh, like I, I know exactly what I'm iterating over. So basically what this is doing is it's going to automatically loop for us. It's going to iterate over each thing and every single thing is gonna be saved into the variable car. And then I have the ability to do something with it. So I'm just gonna do P car. Grab this, P is short for print. Okay. All right, so I have cars. It's a giant list of, uh, of cars that you all like. And then cars.each to car. So I'm iterating over every single item in the array. And each time I go through, I'm saving whatever that value is into the variable called car. So I have Tesla Model S being saved into car and then I'm printing it. Then the next time through, Ford F-150 is being saved into car and I'm printing that and so on and so forth. <laughs> Inside of... Uh, Inside of JavaScript, it's slightly different. It's, uh, I think they do have a for each loop now, but most people are used to this uh, for i equals zero, i is less than cars.length, and then i plus plus. I think this one is just um, console log cars at i. Let's find out if this is the case. Isn't it okay? And then what's the difference between like so cars dot length minus one? What's that? Okay, so cars dot so cars dot length. That's going to mm -hmm. return one, two, three, four, five. So an i to be less than five. Shouldn't it be mm -hmm. less than four? Uh, it's not less than four. Why? Can anyone oh, answer okay. why? Zero, is... one, two, three. Oh yeah, it because it gets to four. Not it gets five. to four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because right. so that's where we start. If we start at if we start at zero. Yeah. Um, that's starting at the first one. Yeah, We're going yeah, to the last one. The length is five, which yeah. means the last index is going to be four. That's yeah, why we do sorry. it this way. Um, let's see what else. I think that's almost about it. Um, yeah, just keep your code dry. I mean, don't repeat yourself. So if you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, there's probably something you can do. Assign it to a variable. Maybe you want to assign it to create another method to do that for you. Uh, so if I see a, a Generally speaking, what I'm looking for is when I see a code, piece of code that's like 70 lines long and it's the same thing copied block after block after block, there's probably something programmatic you can do to fix that. Uh, I think that'll just about do it for this morning, but I do wanna 
leave room for any sort of questions about anything so far. There are 10 challenges for today. Um, you will be working in pairs. One of you will be working with James. One of you will be working with James Smith. Yeah, one of you. Um, so yeah, there are, there's quite a bit to get through today. I want to open it up for any questions about anything. On the iteration mm -hmm. there with the four or the each, um, I know the four is pretty simple because you always have access to the index mm -hmm. UI. Yeah. But would it be smart on the dot each um, in Ruby to do like I equals car dot index or whatever the method is for finding the index of car? That way you have access to the I still through the, is that like a normal way to do it? Yeah. Because yeah. you do it with a while or a, yeah. until as well. You need to like, um, come up with that outside. You have to put the index on global yeah. instead. So, so yeah. So your, your, the basic question that you're asking is um, the basic question is how do I keep track of index in Ruby? Yeah. Yeah. So if I go to Ruby Docs, Ruby Docs has all of the possible things I would ever need. I know that I'm iterating over something, so I'm iterating probably over an array. So I can do array methods Ruby, and then this will list out all the array methods. So actually, if you take a look here underneath um, all of these methods, you'll see everything that's available for you. One of them is actually each index. Um, it actually keeps track of the index for you. Uh, but one like Ruby array keep track of index. Find index, index, uh, each with index. I think there it is. So there's something called each with index where you're actually able to keep track of the item that oh, you're iterating you over and okay. you have the access to the index. Because we were doing that, but we would sort of be doing it manually yeah. instead of having it available. So the way that I could do this is if I wanted to order it, I could do each with index, do car, and the index. So basically what's happening is every time I'm iterating over cars, I'm, the first time through I'm saving car as Tesla Model X, mm -hmm. and the index is whatever index I'm currently on inside of the car array, which is zero, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. I have Ford F-150 being stored at index one. So if I wanted to actually print this out, I could do something like uh, uh, maybe index dot, and then I'll just do car. Let's see what it looks like. So you can kind of see what we've got here. Uh, we have, I just, I just copied and pasted it in. So it's like zero Tesla Model S, uh, one Ford F-150, two Super Outback. So you can keep track of your index that way. Anytime you find anything on the Ruby doc uh, for that version number, mm -hmm. it's available without any additional libraries or anything like that. Yep, okay. that's because it's built into the core library. Okay. Yeah. I was using, I don't know if it, I was using the um, array dot each within the each element that you, the index of the element that you want. So, mm -hmm. um, I kind of found that helpful. Okay. Yeah, everyone, everyone uses a little something different. Anything else? 